Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate our incident management web application, which integrates all its databases with Google Sheets. This application includes robust user management features. This application can be utilized for various purposes, including IT support management, where it helps track and resolve technical issues reported by employees, such as server downtime or software bugs, with assigned tasks and statuses. It also supports customer service by allowing users to log and manage customer complaints or inquiries, ensuring timely responses and resolutions. Additionally, it aids facility management by enabling the monitoring and addressing of facility-related incidents, like equipment failures or safety hazards, with detailed task assignments. The application facilitates project issue tracking by identifying and managing project-specific problems, assigning them to team members for resolution. Furthermore, it is valuable for healthcare incident reporting, where it records and tracks medical or operational incidents in healthcare settings, ensuring compliance and follow-up actions. For this demo, I will focus on healthcare incident reporting. The application features a two-panel layout. The left panel displays a list of all incidents, showing the incident title, description, priority, status, and assigned team. You can filter this list using the filter panel at the top by incident number, caller, status, priority, assignee, or assigned department. The right panel provides detailed information about the selected incident, including associated tasks, notes, and activity history. It features a tabbed interface to seamlessly view tasks, notes, and activities, or update history for the selected incident. You can easily create a new task for the selected incident by clicking the plus task button. The task list can be filtered by state and priority. Viewing a task opens a modal titled View Task, which also offers a tabbed interface displaying task details, notes and activities, or update history. Activities and notes are presented in a clear timeline format, indicating who created or updated them and when. You can add notes at both the incident level and for individual tasks. Any changes made to a task are recorded and displayed in the Activities tab. Moving to the drop-down section, you can manage all necessary drop-downs for the app, such as callers, assignment groups, categories and service areas. These can also be added directly via the incident creation form. Now let me guide you through the application workflow from start to finish. I will create our first incident by clicking the plus incident button, which opens the incident creation form. The incident number is auto-generated and the open dawn field defaults to today's date. I'll enter a short description. For the caller field, we have a creatable select field that lists available callers, along with an inline form featuring name, email, and phone number fields. Let's add a new caller here. As you can see, the new caller now appears in the dropdown. I'll select that caller. The priority field defaults to medium and the state field defaults to new with options including assigned, active at service desk, on hold, awaiting review, active at support group, resolved and canceled. The assignment group field lists departments or teams, such as radiology, imaging, or nursing in a healthcare context, and can also be added directly as it's a creatable select field. Any detailed description goes here. Finally, I'll click the Create button, and you can see the incident record was created successfully. Now let me show you how to update the newly created record and how it's logged in the activity record. I'll change the priority of the selected record. You can see the update was successful. Let's navigate to the Activity tab, where you'll find the recent activity listed Priority was changed from medium to high by super admin on current date. Let's make one more change. 
and you can see the timeline view functioning as expected. Next, let's add a new task by clicking the plus task button. The task form displays incident information at the top, defaulting to the selected incident. I'll enter a short description, followed by a detailed description. The priority defaults to medium and the state defaults to new. Then I'll select an assigned user and an affected CI. Let's hit the submit button to save the task. And the new task was added successfully. We can edit the task by clicking the pencil icon. Let's make a quick modification. And you can see the update was successful. We can view the individual task by clicking the view icon. This modal view also provides a tabbed interface with three tabs, the task details, a notes tab, and an activities tab. The activity tab logs the modification we just made. Let's add a quick note here. And you'll see it was added smoothly. We can also filter these tasks by state and priority, enhancing our ability to manage them efficiently. Now the most interesting part is how you can make this application your own. To begin, make a copy of the spreadsheet using the link provided in the description below. Next, open the script editor by navigating to Extensions and clicking on App Script. Click the Deploy button and select New Deployment. In the dialog box that appears, choose Web App as the deployment type. In the description box, type anything, such as version 1. From the Execute As drop-down, select Me. For who has access, choose only myself. Finally, click the Deploy button, which will prompt you to authorize the code. Go ahead and grant all the necessary permissions. Once the deployment is complete, you will be presented with a web app URL. Before opening the web app, you need to set it up and add users. To do this, open the spreadsheet and click on the custom menu named Incident Management. Then, select Setup and add test users. This will add a few users with different roles, each having the password 1234. You can view these users in the Users tab. Now open the URL in a new tab, and here you go. The application is live. Let's log in first as a super admin. And there you have it, the application is now active. Having logged in, when you click the profile icon in the top right corner, you will see action items like change profile, send invitation, manage invitations, and manage users. The Change Profile option will be visible to all users, while the remaining items are exclusive to the Super Admin. Now let me walk you through each one. The Change Profile section allows you to modify your profile name and password. When you click it, a Profile Settings dialog box appears with two tabs, Profile Information and Change Password. In the Profile Information tab, you can update your name, and in the Change Password tab, you can change your password as demonstrated. Next, the Send Invitation section enables you to invite new users to join the system. Simply enter an email address, select a role, and click Send Invitation. This will send an invite with a password that the user can use for registration. The Manage Invitation section allows you to manage and delete invitations, displaying a list of invited users along with their email, role, status, and invitation code. The Manage Users section lists all users in the system with fields like name, email, role, and status. Here you can delete any existing users except the super admin, and you can also change the role of any user. In future versions, I plan to add more role-based access features to this application.
For now, that concludes the overview. You can contact me for any customization requirements. If you enjoyed my effort, please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.